Hi there, Zoe. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. That's okay. Um, I was just going to quickly introduce um, myself for people who don't know me, and then I'll, I'll come on to you if that's okay. So my name is Martha English, and this year we set up a charity called healthgiver.org, and we are helping people who have suffered a traumatic change in their life. Not only the person who suffered something, maybe an illness or, for example, COVID, um, and also their family. So that's the sort of thing that um, I do. And um, Zoe, I know that you're a life coach, aren't you, for um, Phoenix? Um, could you tell me a bit more about what a life coach is? So a life coach, uh, we there's a real range of what life coaches do. So I think it does very much depend on which life coach you work with as to the approach and the techniques that they use. Um, ultimately, the difference between us and counselling is that we start with where you are now and where you want to get to. So a lot of the focus in the sessions is present state to future state. So the past often comes up in that because the past can quite often play quite a significant um, part of who we are now and why we are where we are. Um, but the focus of the sessions, although they can be a type of talking therapy for a lot of people, the focus of the sessions is always where you are now and, and where you want to get to. And then coaching is the guidance and the support to help people work out what they want that to look like and then the support in, in how to get there. I quite like the term guide and explorer. It's not for us to make decisions. It's not for us to set the pace or tell people what decisions they need to make to move themselves forward. But what we do is give people that safe space to work out what that looks like for them and what they feel is the best route to take them forward. That's, that makes sense. That's really good, isn't it? Because, um, you know, historically we've been told quite a lot of things to do and, you know, from school or parents or just our culture, really, I suppose. Yeah. So that's nice to hear. Um, and what sort of clients would you mainly deal with? What would be your ideal client? So I don't, I don't work with a demographic. I work with what we would call a psychographic. So it's more where people are at. Um, I guess you could, could describe it as the headspace. So the things that I hear from people when they first get in touch with me is quite often stuck, frustrated, lack of self-confidence, loss of self-worth. Um, quite often it's because something has happened sometimes something that hasn't been foreseen something that hadn't been planned that's given them a bit of a knock and so they feel stuck in the situation that they're in um, quite often people know what they want they know where they're trying to get to but they get to a certain point get stuck and they bounce back to where they were or they might not know what they want they just know that it isn't where they're at at the moment so those are the type of problems that I work with um, but that could be anybody from that could be young people that could be men and women right up through to their you know I've had clients in their 60s and 70s so you're never too young or too old to have some support in working out what you want your life to look like and so that's typically the type of work that I do the type of person <laughs> could could be anybody okay good yeah that's a good answer um and um what do you actually do so if I was if I came to you and said you know I'm not really happy I, I want to make some changes um what would you do and how would that sort of work how long is a program or is it just one or two sessions so I think it, it very much depends on the person sometimes people find that just that one call or occasional calls just to help that get that clarity or just have that safe space to talk things through um, sort of on an irregular basis is helpful to them. And for other people, when they've got something more challenging to work through, they're looking for more of a sort of that holistic support. So the sessions and then contact support in between and then potentially other products or services that sit in with that. So I offer both because every individual always needs something slightly different. So I offer everything from, from a pay-as-you-go session to right through to sort of 12-week to 12-month packages of support, dependent on how long people anticipate that journey is going to be. And depending on what people are working through, you know, that and that year support can be really helpful knowing that they don't have to go through this 
on their own. And coaching is very much about helping people to see that they can and they have got the tools and the skills that they need to be able to do that themselves. But some people don't have that support network in place. And so the offer is there that if people want that longer term support, then they, they can have that. OK, brilliant. And what would you say to somebody who wanted to make a change, but they're a bit dubious about coming to see a life coach? You know, haven't really heard of a life coach yet. What would you say to that person? I hear that all the time. The number of times I get contacts from people and they'll say, I don't know what a life coach is, but so and so said that you can help me with this with this problem, or they've said I need to come and speak to you because um, nothing's changed. I mean, it changes for a lot of people. It's a scary place, and sometimes we stay where we are and we stay in that comfort zone, even though we know it's not comfortable and it's not really where we want to stay. But that fear of change and what we need to do to make that change can be can be quite an intimidating. Kind of process for people so I think um, for people looking for a coach it's more when you know you know you can do it but you need someone or you need that accountability or you need somebody that's going to kind of give you that little bit of a, a nudge quite often I'll describe it as you know that voice in, the, in your ear that says you, you can you've got this you know you can do this and so quite often some of the conversations or some of the sessions are really just about helping people to see what is already there but sometimes it's laid dormant for a little while you know and I think especially when people have gone through adversity or they've gone through something that's been and felt quite traumatic for them it's quite hard to work out and to have the confidence that you can move forward with something and so a lot a lot, a lot of what I do and through coaching is helping people to see that quite often what helps them to survive when we really tap into that and help people recognize that they've got those skills and those characteristics that got them through the difficult times, when you tap into that and put it into something positive, that can really help people move forward. So it's not necessarily about move, you know, forcing people to make changes they're not ready for. You've yeah. got to be ready to take that step forward. But sometimes it's just about helping people to see what's already there and recognize that that's already within them to be able to to take those steps them, themselves so if somebody is ready to take the first steps um, how do they get in contact with you okay so if they wanted to get in contact with me um, we would arrange a call so I offer a free free call there's no obligation to sign up to anything there's no sales pitch or anything like that it's just a 45 minute chat just for me to understand really what people are, are going through, um, where, where they are, how, what's got them there, what's held them back from making changes before and where they want to get to. Um, I need to understand that. I need to understand a little bit more than you can get from an email. So a, a video call or a phone conversation is really helpful for that. But also it gives people a chance for them to ask questions. Okay, what is it you do? What does a session look like? What, what do I have to, you know, what am I signing up to if I choose to sign up? Um, so it's just that chance to meet and with coaching rapport and building that trust and that relationship is really important. So I always ask people after a call to just go away and have a think about it and to not feel like they need to rush into any decision because it is an important decision for people to make and they do need to feel ready, but they also need to feel that I am a good match of somebody who can help them through that. And there's lots of coaches out there and so it's good for people to have talks and have conversations with different people to work out, okay, who's a, who's a good match? Who do I feel that I can open up to and be honest with? And who's going to be a good person to, to help me move forward? Because some, some coaches are more nurturing, some of us are more challenging. So you, you've, got to find, you've got to find somebody who you feel has a style um, that would would really support you and your website is phoenixlifecoach.co.uk that's it it's fine. Right. <laughs> okay, so if anyone wants to speak to zoe then uh, they know how to get hold of her and yes. thank you it's really good to talk to you it's amazing thank what you do so great thank you thank you very much bye